This is the Sony IFB Dash Full HD version 3 card. To be clear, it's not made by Sony, it's an aftermarket product. However, it is for certain Sony products and no others. It's an expansion card that allows HDMI input. Any device that carries an IFB slot, interface board slot, can accommodate this card. Projectors from the 80s, 90s and into the 2000s. This also includes some rear projection monitors. The card will also work on any of Sony's interface switches, the PC1270, 1271 and the PC3000. Please click on the link to find out more about these switches in my video. This is how the card came to me, packed in this box. There's the card as I just showed before. It also comes with a remote. The other part that came in my order is an optional extra. I'll talk about this later. Here's a briefing on the card, gives you an idea of what projectors it's compatible with. It actually has two inputs, two HDMI ports, both HDMI 1.4 compliant, true 12-bit deep colour support, advanced gamma circuit, etc, etc. Tells you what it's ideal for, PS3, Blu-ray, so on. The card seems to get around the copy protection of HDMI, HDCP has support for resolutions from 480p up to 1080p, also a lot of PC mode supports. This is all getting into the realms of HDMI talk and that's not my area of knowledge. I'll stick with the CRT side of things. Remember this adapter piece I showed you before? That's necessary to use with the HDMI card on a certain Sony projector. This projector is the VPH-D50 HT Mark II. For some strange reason, this projector does not have the IFB slot. It uses something else. What you need to do is remove the card that's circled in red. Then you take the HDMI card and insert the adapter, like so, into the back of the card. With that in place, you're now ready to insert this card into the projector. Continue installation by connecting the projector's cables to the connectors on the expansion piece. Similar cards are available for other brands of projector. This is the Vim Full HD card and is suited to the Marquee brand of projectors. Barker was also a very big player in the CRT projector space, going so far as to have the campaign slogan CRT forever. Great sentiment, but what happened? It didn't last forever, obviously. This is the Barco Full HD. This gives HDMI input to Barco projectors and contains four HDMI ports. Let's have a closer look at the card. Input 1 and Input 2 are associated with Link 1 and Link 2. Status indicator LEDs, i.e. if there's an input plugged in there, that'll light up green. The SW switch, a small tactile push-button switch there is to be able to change between input 1 and 2, vice versa. IR, there's an infrared receiver port inside there for the remote. More status indication LEDs. Gamma adjustment trimmer, contrast adjustment trimmer. Now the contrast should only be done by a technician, that's what the manual says, so that's probably one to avoid unless you really know what you're doing. Then there's this 3D delay business. This is another feature of the card that I haven't spoken about yet. This enables 3D display on your projector. In order to do that, you need a Lumigen Radiance video processor hooked up somewhere in your video chain. Then on top of that, you need to put in an, an emitter into that port, like a dongle, that will send the signal, the 3D signal, to your 3D glasses. This card would probably enable you to view your PlayStation 3, for example, in 3D on a projector. However, you need the expensive or a expensive Lumigen 3D processor. You might get a cheap one, plus the 3D glasses, plus this card. So there's a lot you need to get 3D from your display this way. However, it is an extra option that is available. The remote doesn't have all that much 
functionality. It can be used to adjust the gamma and a couple of other things, but it's not really that useful, even though by looking at it, you would think with all those buttons, it must have full control over the card, but a lot of these buttons are just dummy buttons. This is a general remote, I think, that they've adapted to be used with the card. I wondered about this card and what it actually does. It has three digital to analog converter chips, those three chips in center of screen that are parallel with one another, convert the digital RGB to analog RGB. So it seems the card outputs an analog signal of some sort. SCART RGB is probably not what it does. The card can output 1080p, SCART RGB does not support that. Next, it could be component video. Component typically goes up to 1080i, technically can go above that, but is not supported industry-wide to be at 1080p and beyond. So maybe that's out of the question. This leaves VGA as another possibility, or RGB HV. To test this theory, I'm going to use the Sony signal interface switcher, the PC-1271. The reason I'm plugging the card into the switcher is that the switcher has its output. And I wanna see what this card outputs. It only outputs analog signals as far as I know. It's got the output area that has S-Video, Composite, RGB-S and RGB-HV. Not sure if component can come out of there. I expect it would, but I don't know for a fact. Still analog. And then there's the remote one output, which I've read the pin out, and it consists of the analog signals plus a few other things, but certainly not anything HDMI compatible. I'm plugging my laptop's HDMI cable, the output of my laptop, into the input of socket one on the HDMI card. It appears we have success. The laptop's outputting via HDMI its video signal going into the switch's HDMI card, then outputting into RGB HV, or VGA in other words. Then into the LCD monitor via BNC to VGA cable. We're on a high resolution right now. We can go to 1366 by 768. Yep. And we go to another one as well. A nice 1280 by 720, 59 hertz. Yep, all good. I can confidently say that the card, essentially what the Sony Full HD card is, is a HDMI to VGA converter. That's essentially what the card is. It's time to test the card out on our old friend here, the Sony RVP-6010QM. Big 60 inch rear projection CRT multi-scan projector. The card is inserted directly into one of the IFB slots with the PlayStation 3 hooked up, of course, via HDMI. This is a Star Wars pinball table from one of the Zen pinball game collections. The picture is looking quite good, considering that the rear projection unit is not even calibrated in. It's really just turned on and played as is. Currently the setting is at 720p. When I go up to 1080p, the convergence goes out a lot on the projector, but I don't believe that has anything to do with the card. That's more the settings and capabilities of the projector itself. It would be interesting to see if this card produces any lag. I would suggest it doesn't. It's not scaling as far as I know, so it doesn't have that processing issue to add extra lag time. As for alternatives, there are much cheaper alternatives. Dell has this HDMI to VGA converter for 35 Australian dollars, and there are many, many other cheap alternatives. Look at this for an example. How can this converter here be created and delivered to your doorstep for less than 10 bucks. That is mental. The Sony Full HD card comes in at a much more expensive price, nearing 350 US dollars. For this you get two HDMI inputs, gamma adjustment, contrast adjustment, 3D capability. Arguably the quality should be far better on this card than a cheap $35 converter. However, I don't have the two to compare against, unfortunately. For anyone with a projector, 
that's compatible with the card. I would recommend it still. I like how it integrates fully into the unit, requires no external power supply, doesn't need to be dangling off the back, plugged in, just go straight into the IFB slot and you're good to go. I hope you've enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more unusual devices and CRTs and so forth. Thanks for watching. See you next time.